seat and enjoy. A small aircraft can be seen approaching a beautiful island, and a girl called Julia rushes into her boss's office to tell him that visitors have arrived. Melanie exits the aircraft first, followed by JD and his brother Brax. As soon as Patrick exits the aircraft, he goes to assist Gwen. Julia, Mr. Rourke's personal assistant, meets them on the dock. Damon is watching them from afar. JD and Brax are instructed to wait at the bar while the others go to their rooms. Unpacking starts as Patrick has an odd meeting with his valet. Julia invites Gwen into her room and they discuss Rourke's ability to fulfill everyone's dreams on the island. Julia offers her a cryptic response, and she gets a nosebleed leaving Gwen's room. After preparing for the evening, Gwen investigates and finds a reflection of a burnt guy who isn't there when she turns around. She later joins the others, as JD and Brax wait for their room and tease Patrick. Melanie interrupts their discussion, asking everyone what their fantasy is, but they end up discussing about how it's done instead. Suddenly, Rourke appears and formally welcomes everyone to Fantasy Island, explaining the two rules, only one fantasy per person and they must complete their dreams. Only the island knows how the fantasy will end. The brothers are the first visitors to start with he fantasy, so Rourke brings them to the fantasy, telling them they wanted it all. They receive a big house with a party. Their fantasy continues until the strange figure of the burnt guy arrives. The next day Rourke invites Gwen to ask her about her fantasy, telling her that the dream in her questionnaire is more abstract, but he welcomes the challenge. Gwen tells Rourke that she wishes she had a daughter with her ex-boyfriend Alan and that she regrets rejecting his marriage proposal. To alter the moment, Rourke gets up and leads her to a door that houses her hidden dream. It's been five years since Alan proposed to Gwen, and he's still waiting for her at the restaurant where he proposed. When they arrive, Rourke encourages Gwen to relax. She is first perplexed, believing they have brought her actual Alan to the island. Rourke assures her that on Fantasy Island, everything is possible. Patrick and Melanie also discuss their desires. He tells her he wants to play military since he wanted to be one but became a policeman after an event. Melanie's dream is to have a revenge on her high school bully. She was so disturbed by her that she had to visit a shrink they all called Dr. Torture. Rourke arrives and gives Melanie instructions for her dream, so she walks to an elevator that brings her to a control room. When Melanie presses the trigger, her bully Sloan is shown tied on a chair. Then she prepares to torment something she think is a hologram of Sloan. The first button shocks Sloan, while the second saturates her. A third button shows her having an affair, and another uploads it on Sloan's Facebook. Next, her husband is seen viewing it and chatting to Sloan on the phone. He claims she's been gone for two days, leading Melanie to assume it's a real person, her bully Sloan. Meanwhile as Rourke pushes Patrick to his dream, Patrick is left alone on the island. Damon later captures Patrick in a military uniform and warns him that people die there, then disappears as troops arrive behind Patrick. They doubt his story and return him to their commander. Meanwhile JD and Brax take a tour around their party house, discovering a panicked room and wondering whether all wealthy people had panic rooms. Then they uncover an armory full with weaponry, firearms, and grenades. When they throw a grenade into the water, Patrick and the troops on the opposite side of the island hear it. The troops return Patrick to their commanding officer. The soldier reads his dog tags and asks why his own name is on them. In a flash, opposing fighters fire on them, frightening Patrick, who is subsequently shot and faints. In Melanie's dream, Dr. Torture enters the torture room. Melanie takes the intercom and tells him what to do since she understood how to stop him. When he reaches for her right hand, Melanie shocks him, then throws water on him, electrocuting him. She then smashes the glass and frees Sloan, pretending to be kidnapped. They flee into the forest. Mr. Rourke refuses to assist JD and Brax when they are assaulted by guys in masks. The panic room door closes as the masked guys enter the home and then the bedroom. Meanwhile, Dr. Torture comes up and attempts to murder Sloan and Melanie. Damon rescues her and instructs them to follow him. Meanwhile Gwen has a bad dream but she wakes up close to Alan. Patrick dreams about the same guy and wakes up surrounded by troops. The commanding officer asks about his dog tags and the picture in his wallet. Patrick informs him the kid in the picture is him at age 9. Patrick says that he's his son and that they're on the magical island that fulfilled his greatest desire, not to be a soldier, but to see his father again. Patrick tells him he died a hero when he was a child. Gwen visits Rourke the next morning. He informs her that she and Alan had a daughter named Lila. Gwen suddenly remembers her kid, and Rourke says the island is doing it. He claims he heard about the island where everything is possible and had his wife seek for it with him, 
But she died before they got there, so he wanted for her to return. Rourke encourages her to enjoy her new life on the island. Now we are back at the forest with the soldiers. Patrick's father believes his story and wants to leave the place because he does not want to die. Patrick believes he must remain to rescue his troops or he would regret it forever, like he did when he failed to save someone. His father refuses to listen, but Patrick fights until he stays. The masked guys don't trust the brothers' tale about the island and keep demanding where their money and narcotics are, because that's the reason of their raid. Threatening JD, he claims that it's in the armory. But the main man forces him remain and takes Brax. Boyne tells Alan that this is everything she ever wanted, but she doesn't deserve it. She kisses him farewell and returns to Rourke, who denies her plea for another dream. Damon leads the girls into a cave, when something emerges behind Sloane. Melanie sees the burned man as the group travels through a flooded tunnel. They arrive to the cave's core where a mystical rock shows them their hidden wishes. Damon tells them he discovered it while investigating a client's request, but Rourke locked him there because he's wicked. He offers Melanie a canteen full of miraculous spring water and instructs her to get out of there. Damon tells them how to leave this place and gives them a paper with a pilot's number, who can take them away. Sloane now remembers what happened between her and Melanie, and she starts to question Melanie's fantasy. It seems like there is something more about it. Gwen finds Julia and tells her she needs a new fantasy since she lost someone in a fire. She begs Julia for assistance, telling her she wants her real dream, not a new one. Gwen rushes into Rourke's office, accusing him of lying to her since he didn't give her the do-over she requested. Rourke agrees and ditches her wedding ring, claiming it's what she has to do. The fantasy now starts. Gwen discovers her apartment building on the other side and rushes to it, only to find it already on fire. Then she rushes up the stairs to find JD and Brax. When Gwen can't unlock her neighbor's door, she rushes to seek assistance and stumbles into Patrick. He's scared to assist and urges her to wait for the fire department, but she rushes in anyway and falls from the smoke. Meanwhile, Brax leads the guys to the armory and he distracts them. He fires a huge shotgun through the locked door. The girls and Damon hear the gunfire as they move and suddenly, Dr. Torture attacks them. Damon pushes him over a cliff and falls together with him. Melanie grabs his map and they head to the mansion. In the meantime, Patrick's dad tells him to stay and take watch as he and his men enter JD's and Brax's place. Brax emerges from the armory with an ignited grenade, forcing the men to drop their guns. He then puts on a mask to hide his identity from the other attackers. When the troops enter the house, Patrick notices Brax leading the masked men to the den while holding the explosive. He believes it is the explosive that would murder his father, so he creeps up to Brax and begs him to turn around, but Brax recognizes him and removes the mask asking Patrick what he's up to in his dream. When the main guy takes the grenade and the other battles with Patrick, his pistol goes off, causing the man protecting JD to glance around. The soldiers kill him and save Patrick and the models. When the troops arrive, the main guy is about to toss the grenade at them when Patrick kills him and Brax grabs the grenade before it falls. But then JD is shot and they all start to flee. Patrick's dad dies in the battle. Then we say Melanie again explaining Sloane what is really going on. Then she realizes they can contact her husband and give him the number of the pilot instead of coming to the hotel. He agrees to assist. Meanwhile Julia saves Gwen from the burning flat. Patrick and Brax discover Melanie and Sloan in the control room, but Rourke stops them from going to the pier. Suddenly, Gwen enters and informs them she discovered their role in someone else's dream thanks to her neighbor, Nick. They are all linked to Nick and what happened to him that night, making this a huge vengeance fantasy. Everything that is happening is Nick's fault. Rourke verifies it but says they must all die in exchange for Nick's life. They all hear the aircraft and rush to the pier, but the disguised guys shoot it down. The group flees into the forest, understanding they must destroy the cave spring with a grenade to end the fantasies. As soon as they enter the cave, they split off and strange things happen. Patrick is assaulted by a zombie version of his father who pursues him until he strangles him. Melanie stabs Patrick as he exits the water. Dr. Torture appears again and attacks Sloan. Melanie arrives and explains that the vengeance dream was hers. She must have arranged the whole revenge dream on the island because she had one very nice date with Nick, but he died the night before they were scheduled to have their second. Melanie confronts them all about their role in Nick's tragic death and her grief. Sloan manages to divert her attention long enough for Gwen to get her dagger and Brax to get the explosives. When they get to the spring, Mr. Rourke emerges, takes the grenade, and informs them that he is imprisoned on the island in order to be with his wife forever. 
Gwen begs him to help them but Melanie shows up and says the fantasy must end the natural way and she throws a grenade inside the well. Julia begs Mr. Rourke to help them. He decides to help and reveals them a secret to end this madness. Sloan must make a wish since she is the only one who did not wish for anything. She then wishes for Melanie and Nick to be together forever. Nick then appears and drags Melanie into the well, but she comes back and throws a grenade. Patrick jumps on it to save the others. The next day the visitors prepare to leave the island. Mr. Rourke tells them he will stay on the island and tells Brax he still has a wish since he was a part of his brother's fantasy. Brax tells him he wants his brother to be alive, Mr. Rourke explains it is possible but he cannot leave the island. As the movie ends, we see JD alive again. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. See you later.